And now back to this. Hi everybody and welcome back to part number three of the Monogram 148 scale B-17G for the Chatterbox Attack slash Bomber Aircraft Group Build. So this is actually part 3B because I don't know what happened to my other part 3. Fortunately, you didn't miss much. So I'm going to do a quick recap and on what has happened. Um since the last video. In the last video, I had gotten this glued all, all glued together and ready to go. So the next video, the next things I did was I glued the wings together and the horizontal stabilizers. In gluing the wings together, I glued the interior portion of the um, landing gear bay in place, taped it from the inside, then glued everything together. That way I can paint everything, then I can just punch this tape out. But the first thing I need to do is I need to clean up all the seams, and that's why I waited a little bit to, uh, to get back to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working, and I'll probably start small. I think I'm going to start with these, and I'm going to scrape, sand, shoot a little primer to make sure everything's cool and then uh, try and get everything ready for paint so what I'm gonna now see I got a gap right there that I need to take care of I just noticed that and that's very very disturbing don't have it on this one well maybe it's kind of hard to tell because the edges of some of this plastic is really uh, kind of dark. Like whatever they use to make this silver color. You get parts where, especially along seam lines and stuff like that, where it's like some of the dark whatever pigments or whatever it is they use kind of settles in the edges. And you get these weird, because you can see these discolorations here. Um, so whatever's in there, that stuff seems to settle along edges and it makes it kind of hard to see what is going on. So I think what I'm going to have to do first is I'm going to have to do some filling here because that does look like a gap. So let me test it with this here knife and just make sure that, yep, that's a gap. Well, that's kind of a bummer, but... I kind of expected it, but it shouldn't be too hard to overcome. I'll put some filler in there. I'll let that cure really good, and then uh, carry on with some of the other stuff. So what am I going to use for filler? I think I'm going to use some sprue goo in this particular case, just because it's an edge and it will be easy to sand and stuff. So. Uh, Do like this with it. See how much it shrinks and kind of fills in and leaves a ghost seam. Okay, so I got the edges filled in on one side or on one. Uh, one of the parts I used sprue goo. I let it cure up really good and I got that sanded down. That looks good. But for the other side, um, I wanted to try something different. I'm sorry. This is the one with the sprue goo. This is the one I used black slow dry CA glue, cyanoacrylate. And um, I wanted to test it because I always hear about people using. CA glue for filler, but it just gets too hard and stuff like that. And I've, I've never really used it for filler, but I thought I'd give it a shot on this. And it looks promising because I got it sanded down. I won't know for sure till I prime this stuff, but it looks pretty good. 
So I got those sanded. I've got the fuselage all sanded, all the seams. Um, and before I go too much further, I need to start gluing in some of this, these clear parts so I can mask them off. So they'll be ready for uh, primer as well. So I've test fitted some of them. They look pretty good. Um, some of them are gonna need a little bit of work. But generally not too bad. Now this one here, the piece of uh, clear that goes over the radio operator's compartment. Um, it sat really recessed in this opening. <clears throat> and, I mean, very noticeably so. So what I did is I did a test fit. I used some these little strips of styrene. Uh, I glued it first with uh, some PVA glue, Elmer's white glue, PVA glue. And to test a theory and I discovered that I was right so I went ahead and I trimmed these up a little bit more I used uh, this stuff here and glued those in place and now this part sits flush with the edges or closer to flush I mean it's not completely a hundred percent perfect but it's a lot better than it was so um, all I have to do is figure out a way to fill this in here, which will probably be with some, uh, some more styrene strip. I'll glue it in there and then carve it down and sand it smooth, but just try and fill that gap in. That way I can use, you know, like some Vallejo acrylic putty or something to further fill it and smooth it. But at least it fits a whole lot better than it did. So should be good. You know, I won't know for sure until I get primer on it, but that's why I need to glue this stuff in. So I'm going to work on that a little bit, get this part glued in, get this finalized. And then I need to fit the, um, the windscreen cockpit area glass. And I'll have to see how that's going to fit because um, the way they did it, it's kind of not modernish but it should be okay so i'm gonna monkey around with that and come back and kind of talk about what i've discovered but all the smooths are smooths all the seams and everything should be really good um everything feels really smooth and i've also tried real quick before i forget i tried something else so one of the problems we have with uh raised detail aircraft are the raised seam lines or panel lines or whatever and cleaning up the um the seams there's no way that you can get around destroying that and so then you end up with these flat spots so some people uh, i've heard use a method that apparently works pretty good where you just uh Put a straight edge and you just redraw the line with your knife and what it does is it like pushes a ridge back up and I, you know I'm, I'm sure it works good and lots of people do it however i thought you know i want to try something a little different so i did and we'll see how it looks under primer but what I did is I got a couple of strips of tape, to me a tape, and I put it, I butted them up right against each other, leaving a seam approximately the width of this raised panel line. Then, using this stuff here, this black slow dry, CA glue, I just put some along that seam. Then I let it cure up really well. Then I sanded it down to the surface of the tape, then peeled the tape off. So theoretically, I should have a nice continuation of that seam, but we'll see. I'm gonna test it, I'm gonna spray some uh, 
primer on here first and see what it looks like. And if it looks like it's going to work, I'm going to do it to the rest of it. It's a little bit of work, but not really that bad considering. So we'll see how it turns out. So let me work on all that stuff. Then I will come back and we'll see what I've got. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about some of this glass stuff I'm gluing in so I can start thinking about doing primer. So, I, uh, what I did is I got the machine gun, because this, this whole assembly takes up one, two, three, four, four parts. So what I did is I cut the barrel off of the receiver, drilled a one millimeter hole to fit the base of the, uh, aftermarket barrel put the barrel in place it's not glued that's why it's crooked it's just all it is doing is acting as a uh, guide for all the parts to keep everything aligned so i can put the barrels in later when i'm ready to install all those so i glued this part to the receiver let that dry really good then holding the receiver in my finger and resting this waste gun window on my uh, thumb and forefinger here with the barrel sticking out. I rested that where it goes on this part here. And then this part here, I dropped into place, made sure everything was aligned and these two parts were firmly touching and then just ran glue all through here. I don't want the gun to swivel or anything like that. So I just glued it and I'm not worried about the angle or anything like that. I want it to be kind of random anyways. Glued it all together. Now I'm just letting it dry. Once it dries, then I can stall it. I can stall it. I can install it. Now, one thing to note, though, is these things don't uh, really fit that great. There's a bit of a gap, but uh, I'm afraid that gap is just going to have to... Uh... It's just going to have to live there. Um, I monkeyed around with it, and I could have done like this, and raised it up but still that's not a perfect solution either so yeah i'm cutting corners when it comes to the glass but as i've mentioned in other videos before as a matter of fact i brought it up in one of my uh, chatterbox conversations uh chatterbox videos with jim that one couple of things that just drive me insane about kits are decals and some and glass in most now granted modern stuff is a lot better but still glass has just always been the bane of my existence it just just doesn't ever seem to work out right they're just like really don't fit that great like these drop in pretty far so they're not flush so i don't know these are okay but the one these waste windows and these bigger windows are just not the greatest so anyway that's where i am so i'll let this dry really good i'll glue this one in place and i can th start thinking about the uh, tail gunners glass cockpit the astrodome and this piece here once i get those and make sure everything's all looking good uh, i'll test fit the nose uh, glass perspex whatever you call it Make sure that's nice and smooth and it's going to fit well whenever it comes time to glue it in place. And then I can start thinking about uh, primer. So I'll be back. All right, let's see how far I've gotten now. So we got this stuff glued in. Um, I used this uh, Tester's Clear Part Cement and Window Maker. I've never gotten the window maker part uh, to fill in this gap here and it looks pretty good I won't again I won't know better until I get some primer on there but it looks looks pretty decent but I've, I've got some lips going on around here it's there's stuff that's just not the best but anyway I got this installed so that is um, good so the next thing and i got this one and i put this one in and out of all the windows on all this airplane this one seems to be the one that fits the best it just looks okay so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to uh put this astrodome in 
and then I am going to try and fit this and then I'm going to assemble this get that installed and then test fit this so things are moving along <clears throat> all right so I've got the Astrodome in this the uh, nose glass or whatever you call it and now um, I need to put this in however I need to make a note that right here as you can see there is a piece of uh, very thin styrene I'm not sure what thickness it is but when this fit into place this side here was really nice. I mean, it fit really good. I was actually surprised. But this side here had an even gap all the way down. So I just cut a very, very thin strip, the same uh, width as the sill, we'll call it, along here. And uh, now it fits perfectly. <clears throat> so I can position this thusly. and whoops that's all crooked put that in a few minutes ago and boy it just went right in there just with no there we go that's better and i'll have to put some pressure from the inside right there when i glue it but that filled in nicely so no more gap to speak of really i may have to put a little bit of a little bit of uh filler in there but maybe not <clears throat> all right so we've got some stuff uh drying here curing up um i got the uh windscreen in and that actually lined up pretty well pretty stoked the way it turned out and as good as i can get it Got the mount installed for the uh, radio operator's machine gun, which is not going to be installed. Uh, I've seen photos and I've heard that, you know, sometimes they were stowed until they were uh, ready to get cracking on business. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I'm doing. So what I need to do is I need to let this stuff cure up good. And I've also got some other parts drying um, and ready for the next step on those. So I think I'm gonna jump back on these wings now that this has had time to cure and see about uh, smoothing that stuff out and seeing what I need to do to get those monstrous engine nacelle seams taken care of. So I'm gonna start whacking on that with some sanders and then come back. All right. <clears throat> So I've got everything pretty much sanded as well as I'm going to get for right now until I get some primer on it. So in order to do the primer, I need to do the masks. So I had a really hard time finding masks. I usually use Edward, but I could not find any for this kit to save my life. However, I found these Montex masks uh, here in California. So I ordered them and... Uh, I've started installing some. So what I've done is I've got the uh, tail gunner position um, in place. And now I can just work my way around the rest of the aircraft. So I've got this. So now I can move on to... This is all for the cockpit here. This is for this part here. That one is for that, so on. So I'm gonna continue working on this. And then once I get it done, I will come back and show you the results. Quick, before I go much further, the nice thing about these decal or these uh, masks is they actually use the part number of the kit for the reference number as to where they go. For example, this one here, 
uh, on the left side of the fuselage is part 75L. So 75L is what goes on this side. And it's that way all the way around. Because a lot of these windows are uh, really close in size. And uh, it'll make it a whole lot easier to install all these things. All right, so I've got this stuff on here. And now I'm ready to spray some primer on all the seams to make sure everything's looking good. Now I may have to redo, I may have to do something different with some of this masking because on these really sharp corners, sharp edges and stuff, uh, angles I should say, it's just not, it's not, uh, it's not staying down. So may have to do something different there, but anyway, Right now, I'm just concerned with spraying all these seams, so I will do that with um, this Surfacer Gray here by SMS, and uh, yeah, see how it looks.